Welcome to Whisper Report. What are the biggest challenges of using generative AI in logistics? Video edition. I'm Dr. Doreen Galley, Chief of Research at TBW Advisors, LLC. The answer is always in the whispers. Subscribe today. Biggest challenges of using generative AI in logistics. We took the most frequently asked, the most urgent questions straight to the logistics and supply chain experts in the industry. This WISP report addresses the question regarding the biggest challenges using generative AI in the supply chain and logistics. The first challenge, however, is not unique to that industry, nor is it unique to generative AI. This challenge applies to all analysis and analytics, including all forms of AI, generative or not, regardless of the size of the models. Put simply, no matter how many ways you state it. Bad inputs in equal bad outputs. Ultimately, it's going to be a function of garbage in, garbage out. Quality of information. Any good in, good out. Is you're only as good as your data. When you put garbage data in, you get garbage results out. Additional research on technology available to help with getting and cleaning data in supply chain and logistics is available in Conference Whispers Manifest 2025 and Conference Whispers Smart Retail Tech Expo. Challenges unique to logistics and supply chain. Given the dominance of a common answer, this raises the question, is the sector of logistics and supply chain in worse shape versus other industries? More specifically, is the data itself within logistics and supply chain the problem? If so, why? Put simply and as depicted in figure one, the challenges go far beyond the data. As Don Oddington, Cloud9 Perception put it. In the logistics space, there is a level of complexity that is much tougher than regular English language. These complexities come in for several reasons. The data doesn't exist. There's an ideal digital world in which is very different from the physical world. As Owen Nicholson from SlamCorp pointed out. If you're not seeing all the edge cases, if you're not seeing real world deployments with all the gnarly things that go wrong, then all you're doing is creating idealized models which don't actually work in the real world. Distribution centers are full of human and robot workers, as well as machines from multiple manufacturers. Unlike construction, Many of these machines are in the same building they entered at the start of their usefulness as brand new machines long before generative AI existed. Logistics is not the neat and tidy world of fintech transactions. Data is inconsistent. As Ben Tracy of Vision pointed out, is that we've actually skipped a few fundamental steps before we can get to generative AI being useful and being reliable. They don't monitor data quality on a regular basis. They don't have consistency and standardization across different data formats. And their systems just aren't exportable or easily exportable uh, for the data that's inside. Or what data professionals call it, good old fashioned data quality. To put in the simplest term possible, we all learned in elementary school, you need data in the same units to perform any math over the data. You do not add inches and feet together. You cannot add meters and feet together. You don't speak globally about time without time zones. But perhaps the most important thing, you cannot create data quality, nor can you analyze data that you haven't or cannot export. Data is manual and miskeyed. If you're wondering how bad the data can be, Don Favier of Green Screens provided some hard facts. It is not uncommon for us to flag about 35% of their data as dirty, right? Dirty meaning it could be miskeyed data. It could be um, something that is tagged as a full truck loop and it's a partial. Obviously, if one looked at data for a half truck and leveraged it for a full truck, the resulting analytics are useless. With 35% of one's data being dirty, there's work involved before you can even hope for insights. Data lacks historical context. For any AI to be successful, need massive amounts of data 
over a very small problem so the mathematics behind the AI can provide useful information. Right collection of the data and uh, generating the incorrect forecasting or any other details out of it. So a lot of people do not have a huge history of the data or not having the enough historical records. And due to that reason, they go into the GNI implementation because everybody is going it. But eventually they do not get the result as per their uh, uh, you know, expectation. No matter how powerful the technology, all forms of AI need good data. Furthermore, the data must have context to be useful for any advanced form of AI, including generative AI. Bad processes. One obvious reason for messy data is the messy manual and imprecise or undefined processes it represents. The biggest challenge, as Bill Digard of Flexport shared, is simply not slapping it on bad processes. There's going to be a lot of process re-engineering required to make the best use of AI. If process re-engineering and establishing a clean data fabric is your organization's Mount Everest, TBW Advisors LLC offers a lot of first-hand experience and expertise to teams and executives via inquiry. Any client at this phase should schedule an inquiry to receive guidance. We'll set up a plan of inquiries during your entire journey to give you any guidance we may have or can gather. The plan will cover the major milestones, including but not limited to strategy reviews, presentation reviews, and architecture reviews. It is not an area to go through without a guide on your side, even if the work is outsourced. Resistant to change. It is always important to consider the culture of any organization when executing or desiring to execute change management. As Erica Frank of Optimal Dynamics put it, We really need to take a healthy self-assessment internally, look at our operations, how resistant are we to change? How are we going to empower this from the top down? Who are the champions internally that can help us implement successful new technologies into the organization? As with any change management, executive buy-in with a business objective are critical to success. AI for the sake of AI? It's always a bad idea. Perhaps the reason many in this space are resistant to change is the change is constant. As Jason Augustine of WNS put it, Because the environment keeps changing every three to six months. Human-machine interaction. Logistics, like manufacturing and construction, has a lot of machines in the loop. These machines may or may not be intelligent machines. Thus, as Dr. Mario Belnick of River AI shared, The challenges will come up how humans and robots in the future will interact as a team together. Optimizing the total solution over this shared space is a true goal. But as one organization is optimized, what about working between each organization? As Justin Liu from Alibaba.com stated, I think the biggest challenge today is really understand what AI can do and what AI cannot do. A lot of the suppliers manufacturing in the U.S., we need to onboard them, we need to help them to run a successful business on Alibaba.com in order to you know, be able to offer their selection to our U.S.-based buyers. And that cannot be completely done by AI. That's correct. Bringing each and every machine into the system or each and every supplier in the complex array of data and the suppliers manage to coalesce together is itself not standardized. Thus, cannot be automated. Cannot use generic Gen AI. As Balahi Gunter of Hoptech pointed out, As most of the Gen AI models are very generalized, AI is data hungry, and you need to train AI on real data. The biggest challenge of AI or generative AI in logistics is that the generative models, they don't know the logistic jargon. You need to train them. You need to train them the logistic language. And this is the main challenge. In summary, as best put, you need data, highly accurate data, that's relevant to a company's supply chain. Opportunities for generative AI in logistics. With all the challenges discussed, it may seem discouraging 
it is important to realize the significant opportunity awaits, thus easily providing business justification for the work to transform. Carefully, as Justin Liu of Alibaba.com put it, we are trying uh, you know, continuously uh, to adopt AI into our workflow, into our latest integrated AI, into our latest features and functionalities to help our buyers and sellers to do their business more efficiently. Right, Everick, a shipsy, believes the value is in to get out of it by adding it as a first layer to basically understand the issue coming in and source it to the proper department. Mick Oliver of Dexray is sharing. We really don't see it as a challenge. We see it as an opportunity. We're a data company, uh, art. So we want to take that data and be able to provide our customers with insights based on that data. Rich Kroll of Hoplite observed that the intelligence systems are... Because they can be way more efficient. Um, people tend to get their answers a little bit faster. And, um, you know, I think, I think that's a good thing for the industry. Most importantly... And people shouldn't fear of adopting this technology. Some people are thinking about, oh, this AI is going to take my job. AI, I believe, uh, is not going to replace your job. Uh, the people who are going to use AI are going to replace your job. This has been Whisper Report. What are the biggest challenges in using generative AI in logistics? The answer is always in the whispers. Subscribe today. Have an amazing day.